That was live. All right. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Black Spinner Music Chat Pot. Ah, oh, fuck it up. The Black Spinner Music Chat. Black Spinner Circle Music Podcast. Take five. <laughs> Yes. Sibilant, sibilant, sibilant. Take one, take one. <laughs> well, it took me two months to do Be Cool or Be Podcast Out, so <laughs> this will take me another two months because I keep changing the name to this thing because it's not sticking. But today, what does stick is our episodes and our monthly installments of, of ongoing episodes. So today's episode, we are going to be doing a vinyl battle between the first album by Asia released in 1982 against yes 90125 but first before we get to that let us talk and introduce our guest for today um on the first on the panel to my left to my right it's Mark Alden Taylor from the Free Form Pod Rock podcast <laughs> Also from the BS sessions with Mark and Jerry, and on Which Tuesdays, you, and on Tuesdays you can catch him on that metal station from eight p.m. to one a.m. or twelve p or noon. Six p. Uh, me, that metal station is six p.m. Eastern, about uh, Pacific to nine p.m. Uh, starts at six p.m. Pacific, nine p.m. Eastern, eight p.m. Okay. Dude, it seems like you're on a lot longer than three hours, man. I'm on five hours, dude. Oh, that's six six till nine. Nine. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on six to eleven, dude. I think that's six to nine. My bad. Six to no, the starting time. I'm on okay, but that's a, but it's a really cool um, place to hang out on, on Tuesdays and talk to him and talk to other people in the chat room and get your request in and listen to all the spectrums that falls into the big spectrum of rock. Yeah, Andy, you didn't ask for nothing last night. I was waiting for you to ask for something. I had the music open and waiting for... Yeah, I, saw him on, I saw him on the chat. Oh, yeah, I, was yeah, yeah, I couldn't think of anything, so I was just listening. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't think of anything. I wanted to play something that will resemble tomorrow night, but I couldn't think of anything. I didn't want to tip my hand. Yeah, but the BS sessions is now Mark and Jerry and Charles with with, with Charles. Yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, he's on. He's on every week. I mean, it was we might as well made him a member, man. It's like you know, I love the guy. He needs to be on. Yeah, give him a piece of that pie. Yeah, he does, and now he needs to come up with ideas. I'm tired. Yeah, because, <laughs> man, yeah, also, because I, miss, I miss the show once every couple of months, so it's good that Mark has another person on just in case. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry, you give me an idea. What are you talking about? You're giving me a shitload of ideas. I'm like. just fucking with you. Shut up. <laughs> and also, we have Jerry Soupy from the Three Shots Down podcast. Also, from the BS sessions with Mark and Jerry. And also, he's my co host for the Gridiron Smackdown, the, the football podcast that we do on Tuesdays. I really appreciate well, that. We really have a lot have of fun, dude. That. Love talking football. And also, we have Al Horta here for the Be Cool or Be Podcast Out. He is joining us tonight. And also check out his YouTube page. The dude really puts out some really good quality shows on there. Shows that we wish we could go to, but we don't live in the New York tri-state area. So he brings them to us live and does a great job. And he beats everybody. He's the fucking concert yeah. goer to the stars, man. Yeah, I yeah. want to say something to you. You posted something about meeting Getty Lee one time. You said... This is the first time I met Getty Lee. How many times did you meet him? Um, five. Jeez, man. Yeah, I hate. I, I love you, but I hate you at the same time. You know. <laughs> How many times has he met him? I was like, jeez. Um, yeah, dude, because Toronto is right below New York. Come on, that's man. true. New York's yeah, right that's below. True. So Getty's always well, there, man. Come on. The first time was um when he did the solo album. Right, that's the one you posted then, on the Vapor Trail tour. I met him and Alex. On the 30th anniversary tour, I met him and Alex again. And then on the Clockwork Angels tour, I met him and Alex again. And then on the Big Book of Bass, I met him again. So five in total. Okay. How do you get to meet these artists? Do you pay for the meet and greets or you just know no, where well, to go? Well, the the, the concert ones, the, the meet and greets for the concerts, uh, you know, getting Alex, it was because I made that uh, – rushpetition.com website where you can go up on and vote for your top five songs that you want to hear in concert. Me and a buddy made, made did a website 
before the Vapor Trails tour started. All the way, oh God, it was twenty years ago already. Um, God dang, I saw it at Staples Center. I came up with I came up with the idea, and then a friend of mine did the built the website, so we we're both partners in it. He lives down in Virginia area, so um, and then the um, uh, band actually started looking at it for ideas for the Sweet. like An- Anthem Records got wind of it and the band started looking at the website for ideas for a set list and we got in contact with anthem records and they ended, no up, hooking us up. They, they ended up hooking us up with backstage passes you know and uh cool. um tickets within the first 10 rows i mean i i paid for the tickets though you know but we got the meet and greets with them and um the cool thing about the to buying a ticket straight through Anthem is no fees, no nothing. It was just a straight face value nice. ticket, so which was nice, and it was guaranteed first ten rows. So, nice. you know, also, so I did, that, I did that for the, I did that for the uh, Vapor Trails tour and the R thirty tour, and then um, after that, then they were like, "All right, you met them already. We got to give these to somebody else." But right. which I was, I was cool with. I wasn't expecting to get it every single tour. Um, then the Clockwork Angels tour, I got the meet and greets through a radio station. Like that, I know some people at a radio station here in New Jersey, they hooked me up with those, so I got to meet them again on Clockwork Angels, and then nice. that's that's that. Nice. And then the, the book, the book thing, you know, I just went to the book where he was doing his signing, bought the book. Yeah, and- I could have went to Book Soup, but I was lazy, it was too yeah. far. So, hey, and let me ask you, like, do they remember you? I like go, hey man, how's it going? I remember you from so and so. It what when I met them? Yeah, like if you met them a second or third time, like do they remember you? Um, yeah, they would remember me. Like I would kind of mention the um the website. Like the, I right. remember the first time. I remember the first time on a Vapor Trails tour. Like you know when I went backstage and met them, I said that I was one of the guys that did the website and then Alex joked, he was like, Oh, so you're the culprit, you know, like, you know, <laughs> and, um, yeah. but you know, I mean, they, they kind of knew me after that, you know, since then, you know, so it's kind of cool, you know? Oh yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Very, very yeah. Cool. And, um, also speaking of shows and tickets, you went to go see merciful fate last night. How did that go? Um, uh, Monday night. So well, oh, Monday night, Wednesday, right. Shit, man, I'm yeah. losing track of days, all right. Merciful Fate was great, man. I mean, if you're into, like, that kind of metal and stuff, um, I mean, they're they're pioneers, and they were... King, King Diamond sounded great. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, his voice sounded awesome. I, and I don't know, man. Like, it almost sounded, like, too good, like, for his age. So, I don't know if, like, he was doing some trickery there or something, but... I don't know. I was watching closely, and he was singing, so it wasn't didn't look like anything was was bullshit, you know. So I mean, he's uh, probably not a drinker or smoker. If he's actually singing, dude, and he's hitting those notes, then he's fucking kicking ass, dude, on his tour. So I mean, he hasn't toured as Merciful Fate in like twenty years. They were saying, like in this mm-hmm. country, um, he's done King Diamond tours, but nothing to this level. But I mean, they were great, and then. Um, creator and just another band called Midnight opened up. They were great too. Midnight's kind of like um, tr- uh, trio in a vein of like um, uh, like uh, what was the band I was saying before? Uh, Venom. Venom. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of like Venom in that kind of vein. Really good though. They were good, you know. And um, energetic. Um, I only taped like their last two songs that ever set. Because I wanted to save battery and for theater and merciful fate, so um, and room on my phone or whatever. So, but anyway, you can see those three on my YouTube page if you want to check it out. And I saw Doc in Friday, the Friday before. Uh, Don, no bueno. No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to. A- I was going to ask you how he sounded, but that I read your comments and I deleted my comments. Yeah, <laughs> dude. it's almost like one of those. I actually like it's one of the few times I've gone to a show and I've actually felt like sad, like because I loved Doc and growing up when I was in high school and you know Me I too. mean he was one of the great, he was one of the greatest hard rock singers of the eighties, dude. Me and too. Just like he just doesn't have it anymore, man. His bass player was kind of covering 
for him a little bit with the high stuff, but yeah. just he just seems like he has no power left in his voice. I, I his show is on my YouTube channel too, if you want to check it out, you know. But yeah, dude, it's it's over, man. <laughs> you know, and yeah, no George man. Lynch. I mean, I know George Lynch. I know um, I know what's his name, John Levin's a great guitar player. He was, he shredded. You got to be great to cover that stuff anyway. And the band sounded great musically; they were awesome. But Don is just. I don't know, at this point, I don't know why he's. I mean, I, I don't want to. I'm I'm up at the point where I don't want to tell rock stars or musicians or whatever that it's time to pack it. That's their call, you know. That's their. Life. I would. You know, I mean, you just vote for your wallet. You don't go, don't go to the show if they're terrible. I only went because I got free tickets, obviously. But and I never saw Doc in like since like 1988, so I hadn't seen that. Oh, you since. saw them on Back for the Attack. Uh, yeah, oh, the Monster Rock Tour. Yeah. So oh, I saw them on Back for the Tack opening for Aerosmith, and they were horrible. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the year before. So <laughs> they were horrible because George were Lynch, they? like, yeah, they were fighting on stage, dude. Oh yeah, they did it at Monsters of Rock too in Miami. Oh, yeah. they were fighting, dude. It was horrible. George but Lynch I did, I did see them on Trump. Erase yeah. the Slate at the House of Blues in Hollywood, which is no longer there. And they were amazing there. <laughs> no George, but well, that was was a, I, think, I think Don still had his voice back in that that era. He did. Erase the Slate um, is a great album. I saw. I saw. I did see Don. I said I, I did see Don open for Queensrÿche, but he just it was him and the guitar player. I don't know who. I don't think it was John Levitt. It was somebody else. Um, it may have been John Levitt. I don't remember. But it was an acoustic thing. They opened for Queensrÿche, and this is like going over ten years ago, right? When Jeff Tate. Was still in the band, and um, he was sounded okay. You know, I think at that time he was starting to deteriorate, but it was like a low key acoustic thing, so it was kind of like it wasn't like he was belting it out. So, but that's the only that's the only other time I ever saw him besides the '88 show. So, but this this last Friday show was the first time I've seen them like with the full band since '88. So, and, and I don't know, man. I'm kind of I'm kind of glad I didn't put money down on it. You know, yeah. yeah, but the playlist looked amazing, though. You did, but I stuck yeah, over. The playlist was awesome. Yeah, after the show was over, he was on the side of the stage talking to, like some girls and shit. So I kind of stuck over there and <laughs> kind of took a hey. self. He was signing hey, my Alton. he was signing my ticket stub, and the guy, my friend, took the picture, but he was look, looking down. So I was yeah. like, and then he kind of kind of rushed out of there. That's the best I could do. Hey Al, can you um can you get out and come back in again? Yeah, I'm because I'm, that noise and you're breaking up. Is that me? You're I mean, it might be me, so let me get out and I'll yeah. come back. Yeah. All right, you hear me? All right, yeah, Can you hear me? All right, yeah, yeah. I get you. But I well, saw Donnie Osmond on Saturday, he was pretty cool. Woo -hoo. He, I he saw... was pretty, he was pretty, he was a good show. It's not like something I would sit there and like play in the car, but he he was pretty funny, man. It's like my wife fangirled out on him. <laughs> it's like he she he wrote she he said, I'm taking requests. And she goes, Play uh I'm your puppet, you know. And he said, Oh, I got a funny story about that song. And uh he did a cool tribute to his sister Marie. And it's freaking he was a good freaking entertaining, even though I don't like I like Marie. the Donnie Marie show. I his don't sister like her. is still hot, man. Oh God, I I would fuck her. <laughs> All right, I'm sure she's gonna look you up. She's like that, 65. And shit. I don't care. All right, that <laughs> um, sounds better. Oh, uh, but thing is, is that Donnie is a very entertaining kind of guy. He, he was really very personable. My mm -hmm. wife was like, "Oh my God, he talked to me." She's like fangirling out on. It was so fucking cute. I was like, "Damn, Diane, you're like." You're loving this Donnie. I was I enjoyed his show. If you ever see Donnie yeah. Osmond, he's he puts on a good show, man. Yeah. He had some yeah. hot dancers too. And in fact, he was on the Beatles channel doing his own Fab Four not too long ago. He did in my life. I did post it on the free forum. I think I posted on Mark and yeah. Jerry. We got like 200 downloads for that on Mark and Jerry. Wow. Yeah, um, I saw David Cassidy a couple years ago before he passed away. Uh -huh. And he also did in my life. Yeah, I love the Partridge family. But his show was, <laughs> but his show was not good, though. Hey, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy. But, but, but what was cool was that um, 
Peter. I Noon. have no guilty pleasures, bitch. You no. know that. But Peter Noon opened up for him. Peter Noon from um, Herman's Hermits. Yeah. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am Henry yeah, the Eighth. Second like first. That was Same badass, me. man. He Remember badass. Ghost, where fucking Patrick Swayze kept singing. <laughs> I don't remember that part. I you don't remember that where he kept singing "I'm Henry the Eighth, I am Demi Moore." It's been it's a like, long time since I've seen Ghost. Dude, that's a fucking great. Movie. I've probably I've never movie. seen that movie all the way through. To be honest, with you. Yeah, really, that's a great movie, good. dude. Whoopi Goldberg was cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, Whoopi Goldberg was good. And in fact, um, I went record shopping again a couple of weeks ago, and I found her cassette, and I didn't pick it up again. It was still there from like a month ago. And I still didn't pick it up. Yeah, she just went nuts. Yeah, like, she just... I don't know. I don't care. Fuck politics. So uh, we'll start when Al's ready to go. All right. All right, guys. Are y'all ready to go? All right. So yeah, yeah. We are going to get to it. our vinyl battle. And what we're doing here is that we are going through Asia's debut album against Yes's 90125. Now, the way that we do vinyl battle... Is that we are going to go from track against track, track one against track one, and on and on and on, and we will vote for which one's the best. And at the end, we'll come up with a tally and we'll see which album wins. Now, these two albums are very significant because it was the it was the departure of the 1980 band of Yes after they had released my one of my favorite Yes albums, Drama. Drama rules. Which is a badass album. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason there was a split there, and John Damn. Anderson came back because John Anderson did not sing on drama. No, so it was, what's his back. name from that? Was it Trevor Horn? Um, it was Trevor Horn. Yep. And Jeff Downs also was there, and Jeff Downs went along with Steve Howe to join uh, to do yeah to do Asia. I'm sorry, they both formed Asia along with Carl Palmer from Emerson Lake and Palmer on drums, and John Witten. On vocals coming from bass. Terms of- one of the best singers in rock history. Yeah. So those four formed a true super group, not a super group where you only know half the guys, but all these guys came from big groups and formed a band. Yes went on, and John Anderson came back. And ever since then, there's been a lot of moving parts in Yes. There's but he, been but a lot do of you know parts. the story why John Anderson came back to Yes? Tell me. The story is that Trevor Rabin, Chris Squire got hold. Trevor Rabin had that album basically done. It's like his demos. And then freaking, um, what do you call it? Chris Squire heard it. He wanted to bring Trevor Rabin to the band. They called himself Cinema. 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 And then they sent it to John. And John says, I want to be a part of this. John came in and wrote some stuff too. And he added to it. I have the... A thing with Trevor Raven where him doing most of that album by himself. Yeah, Great okay. fucking shit. It's like he was like amazed with Trevor Raven's freaking songwriting and he's just a great guy. They were cinema and they said, let's call ourselves yes. So it was great. Well, I think yeah. their record company pressured them to call themselves yes, didn't they? I yes, think they so. did for sales. Did. Yeah. And really the, the, the way I see it, wherever Chris Squire was at was yes to me. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And they were able to carry the name, and and yeah. rightfully so, because John Anderson was there. So was um, Chris Squire. And who was on drums? Alan White. Alan, Alan White. White. Alan White. Alan White, pleased to be here tonight. <laughs> and one of those underrated now. keyboard players and Tony K. Man. Tony K. yeah. Keyboard player. Oh, God. But do you realize that the Yes 90125 was the first computer computer generated album cover from an apple computer oh really is that why it's got that simon yep cover first on? computer generated but i will give asia the thing the on the album, album cover. cover better yeah yeah it's either the kraken coming out of the sea or the simon says little remember the boop 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 yeah and the boop 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 and you would have to do the lights that, and that's what that reminds me of so let's get on with it. Let's go. So let's go track one. We will go with Mark, Jerry, Al, and myself. And we will vote track one. Heat of the moment against owner of a lonely heart. This was a good battle right off the bat. Yeah. Mark, which one do you choose? I love heat of the moment a lot. I got to go with owner of a lonely heart. 
it's just too amazing that Trevor Rabin, my God, I, I love him better than Steve Howe. <laughs> I love him better than Steve Howe. It's just his voice, you know, it's just, oh, dude, God, that's, that, that riff, unforgettable riff. That rip. Dun, 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 it's like the the backing vocals that Trevor does with John, just so fucking ear candy. Yep. I'm going with Owner of a Lonely Heart. All right. Well, what about you, Jerry? You I have to agree with Mark. Lonely. However, you know, he's a moment's a great song. Don't get me wrong, but talking about the riff, I love that riff in Owner of the Lonely Heart. I love they had a cool video for that too. It's kind of a weird video, but it was kind of cool. But yeah, I got to go with Owner of a Lonely Heart on that one. All right. Oh, heat of the moment or owner of a lonely heart? Wow, it's a tough one, man. Because I it love is. both songs so much, and again, like I didn't write anything down. You know, I go off the cuff with these these battles, so I didn't like really prepare for it. But I don't know, man. This is this is probably the toughest one of the whole night. You know, to really, mm -hmm. I mean, what a way to start off each album, man. Like, yeah, right. It's, their, it's like their biggest hits, you know. Um. As much as I love Owner of a Lonely Heart, I do love it. I'm going to go with Heat of the Moment on this one. Yeah. You can't go wrong. You, either way, you can't go you wrong. You can't go wrong, but that fucking... <laughs> it's like that keyboard part that Tony K does. In fucking yeah. Owner of a Lonely Heart. It's just amazing. Nah, man, it's, just, it's so tough, man. But, I mean, I'm going to edge it to Heat of the Moment. Because, I, you know, it, it's... I don't know, man. I, I, it, it's funny. I, I actually... Um, my brother had the vinyl of Asia, so I kind of like I kind of grew up a little more like I think I was a little closer to the Asia album than I was to the Yes album. Yes album, my brother never really had that, so I got it on my own. Like a little, I mean, what did that come out in '83? '83, '83. Asia well, was the year before '82. Yeah, Asia was '82, and then '83 was the Yes album. So, yeah. um, not the Yes album, but I don't know, one, two, five. Um, <laughs> um, so I kind of didn't get that. I mean, I heard the hits on the radio, I saw the videos, and but I didn't get it until like a little after that. So I have a little bit of a closer relationship to the Asia album. Um, not to say that now one two five isn't an amazing album, it is, but um, I'm gonna go with Heat of the Moment, man, because I don't know, I'm just a little closer to it. So I mean, they're both they're just right there, dude. I don't know, man. It's, I agree. It's you know. Hey, do you know how Yes got the album? Name for 90215? 90215? It's, it's the actual uh, catalog number, I think, right? Yeah. Yep, the catalog number of the album. Yeah. yeah. From Acto, Acto Records? Acto, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on the Acto label. I am going to go with Heat of the Moment. Wow. Um, That oh, was um, pretty easy for me. I think that's a great song. Um, Trevor Rabin is a good guitar player, but he doesn't come close to Steve Howe. Oh I mean, boy! Ooh. 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 I mean, you and Jerry and Trevor Rabin. I mean, y'all oh, yeah. I mean, know that there were other albums in the seventies by Yes with Steve Howe. Yeah, Howes Steve Howe. Yeah, yeah Trevor Rabin mean. did it better live in concert. Oh, oh dude, he no. did. He did. So he you. did Starship Trooper way better than Steve Howe. Oh, Steve sure. Howe is a fantastic oh, one, of the Trevor, best one. Trevor can do Steve Howe stuff with one hand, dude. Yes, he can. I, I saw Literally. him in the round tour and Trevor blew Steve Howe off the stage. Yeah. Just letting you know. So, no, Steve Howe's a great guitar player. He I is. I love yeah. Mr. Yeah. Bluegrass guy. Probably. You know, but... And his solo albums are fantastic, too. The Steve Howe solo albums are... Yeah. Or kick ass, but um, I'm gonna go with Heat of the Moment. Track two, um, it's going to be Only Time Will Tell by Asia against Hold On by Yes. Well, which way are you gonna go with that one, Mark? Can hold on, <laughs> fucking great fucking song. <laughs> fucking hold on, hold on, hold on, fucking great fucking. Harmonies, great fucking guitar playing, fucking Trevor blending with John. It's just fucking ear candy to me. It's like, yeah. you know, I, I love Asia. You know, I, I love Asia, but you get fucking 
the what four albums Trevor did with Yes? Was it four or three? Yeah, four. Four. Compared to the four albums that Asia did, there's no comparison to me. Yeah, but we're not talking about the four albums. I know, but I'm saying Trevor is the fucking key ingredient that lets me go this way. I love Hold On. Okay. And I do like the song by Asia, too. Yeah. Jerry, which way are you going to go on this one? Yeah, this uh, I was never big on that song by Asia, Only Time Will Tell. I don't know. It's okay. But, yeah, I mean, Hold On by a Landslide, in, in my opinion. I love great, that Only Time Will Tell. Too. Great groove to it. And uh, just love it, man. All right. And uh, what about you, Al? Which way are you going to go? Only Time Will Tell or Hold On? Uh, well, uh, Hold On is a great song. If I'm, I'm going to go Asia, hold, uh, Only Time Will Tell. Um, I really love the vocals of uh, of um, John Wetton. What's that? John Wetton? Yeah, yeah, John Wetton, dude. I, I'm having a brain fart. John <laughs> Wetton, I mean, I love I love the, the vocals of him on there. I know Hold On, that's great harmonies, too. And John Anderson, Trevor, you know, but I don't know, man. I like, uh, I like Only Time Will Tell a little better, so um, so I'm gonna go with that one. Um, with on. me, um, this song almost made my ballads on that Kate Till we did. Only oh. time will tell. Two, that that is the flat out winner between these two. Only time will tell is a badass song. It's written. I didn't think it was bad, but fucking listening to John Anderson go justice to the left of you, justice to the right. Speak when you are spoken to, but don't pre- pretend you're it's right. A good song. This life song. is not for living, it's for fighting and for wars. Whatever the truth is, hold on to what is yours. The lyrics. God I damn. The lyrics better than only time will tell. Oh, wow. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, well, that's, Craig, enjoy. That's I love both of them. I will, and I and I enjoyed it on the way home from work today, too. Um, track <laughs> number three. It can happen against Soul Survivors. Ooh. Okay, I love fucking Soul Survivor. I fucking love that song. This was a hard one for me. But the key ingredient is fucking Trevor Raven singing. (laughs) My God. It says, oh my God. His fucking vocals with John mixed in is just Mm -hmm. so fucking amazing. Trevor Raven gives me a hard on. I love his fucking voice. I love his I, 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 don't, I don't like him that much, man. I, I'm just saying I'm his voice. Him, his yeah. voice gives me a Woody. I, I can't I, I lie. Understand. I love all his solo albums better than Steve Howe. He's a better musician than Steve Howe. This guy has done soundtracks for fucking, what's the Jerry yeah. Bruckheimer? He's done the scores. Yeah. Right. I understand. God I dang. Trevor Raven rules to me, so I'm yeah. fucking going. It can happen, man. You can fool yourself. Okay, nah, but again, nah, I'm not nah, considering nah, Trevor Raven. Nah, 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 nah. That fucking I'm sounds so awesome on the end of it's it. It's so <laughs> amazing, dude. But I'm not concerning yeah. his whole career. I'm concerning what he did on this album. I, that's what I'm saying. Totally. But Trevor Raven over Steve Howe is always going to be Trevor Raven to me. Okay. Okay. So that one's Mark. And what about you, Jerry? Which way are you going to go? It can happen or Soul yeah, Survivor? I mean, that, that's, such a, that's my favorite song on the album. So there's no way that, that Soul Survivor. Soul Survivor is a great song, too. Yeah, it is. It's a great I listen song, to that yeah. album more just to catch up than I did 90125 because I was more familiar with it. There's great songs on the Asia album. I'm not dissing it at all. But, right. I know. You know, the, the freaking structure of that song, It Can Happen, is just so awesome, dude. The yeah. keys are awesome. The vocals are awesome. Um, the delay effects Trevor uses on that freaking song are just amazing. Chris Again, Squire, another Akron vocals, another memorable riff, man. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, sticks in your head, man. I mean, you guys don't even talk about like Chris Squire's background vocals. Exactly. Right? Yeah, I mean, my God. God, what a great fucking background! Oh, dude, in that he's like the line. Michael Anthony of yes. Dude. And that bass line he does, like, yeah. and the, oh, it's God, amazing. It's amazing. It's good in that amazing. album. It really is. It always has been. Chris Squire yeah. was always the underlying push he's, in that he's band. He's the Michael oh, Anthony yeah. of Yes. Fantastic. What? Um, he blows Michael Anthony away. I'm oh, talking oh, about the background line. vocals. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bass background line, okay. vocals. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like they can happen on that one, man. All right. 
And what about you, Al? Soul Survivors or It Can Happen? Again, another tough battle, man. Both awesome songs. Uh, I'm going Soul Survivor on this one. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, it, Soul Survivor is probably my favorite. Might be my favorite song on that album. It's a great I song, love, man. It's a great. I song. love that song, dude, so much. And again, again, it, it has to do. I guess I, I had a little bit of a closer relationship with that Asia album than the yeah. Yes one. So, but I mean, it can happen, man. Great song. I mean, all, all the points you guys made are spot on about it. I just, I love Soul Survivor so much, dude. You know, so I'm going with that one. You can't go wrong with that song. It's a great song. It's kind of hard for me, but Trevor Rabin and Chris Squire's backing vocals put it yeah. over the top for me. I got it, man. I got and, it. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I love both albums, but but I think this is a good final battle because of the reasons why these two albums were created. But I am going to go with Soul Survivors. The, the, just the whole piece of music here, with also also the harmonies on that song too. And there's it's a lot of changes in that song, too. It seems like there's an Asia camp and a Yes camp here. Yeah. <laughs> the harmonies, It Can Happen has a great fucking harmonies, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. It's just that I like Soul Survivor a little bit Who more. else sings backing vocals in Asia? You got three singers. You got John Anderson, Trevor Rabin, and Chris Squire singing backing vocals on that on the Yes album. Right. That's a good point, I think actually. they. No, I no, think no. they double John Wetton's vocals. Sure. I don't think nobody else sings backing. Vo- uh, Steve Howell cannot sing. Jeff Jeff Downs maybe. Maybe. Jeff Downs. Yeah. Maybe. I That's know. about it. You're, but you're right. But you're right. In, in in that version of yes, you have the the three vocal attack of yeah uh, John Anderson, Trevor, and and Chris. You know. So yeah. right. Yeah, you get you're getting awesome harmonies with the three of them. The track number four, um, One Step Closer by Asia or Changes by Yes. Fucking Changes. <laughs> Trevor Rabin. Come on, <laughs> man. He sings most of the lead on that song. That dude is amazing. And then Who John plays guitar in that album? <laughs> Trevor. I got. And then you have Chris Squire in the background, John Anderson blending with him. I just like how John and like when Trevor sings, John comes in and does his part. Trevor comes in and does his part. It's just like a cornucopia of fucking ear candy to me. Changes rules, dude. Dun, 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 Change, changing places. Root yourself to the yeah. ground. Yeah. Word to the wise when you get what's yeah. coming. One word can bring you around. And then they all say, changes. And it says, <laughs> when I, and then he goes, when I look into your eyes, I try to find yeah. out why. You know, right. fucking Trevor Raven just makes me feel that fucking song. I fucking love changes. I think that's my fa- favorite yes song ever. Wow. Yeah. Jerry. Yeah, I mean, changes is just a freaking amazing song, dude. It's just one step closer doesn't come any closer to that song, in my opinion. It's a good song. It's a decent song. It's not my favorite off the Asia album, but yeah, come on, changes. What a great tune that is, man. Yep. It really is. Right. And not to mention, you know, people don't give Tony any credit. Either. There's keyboards in that song. Dude, that shit rules. I mean, he was the he was the original keyboard player for Yes, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. He came for uh, albums, and then Rick Wakeman, Rick Wakeman came in on Fragile. Was so. that when Rick Wakeman's yes album? Right? No, Rick Wakeman's yeah. bad. He's awesome. Yeah, but don't listen yeah. to his solo albums. It's pretty just bad. that freaking. Uh, it's just I like the solo albums. You just like an that freaking song? You like well, that? Maybe freaking... it may be a little overproduced in the studio, maybe, but it still sounds freaking. Like awesome. King Arthur album is horrible. <laughs> it's King. It's King Henry and his. Well, whatever it was, <laughs> King something it was horrible. But um, he did do a King Arthur and the Round Table as well. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> I just wanted to go opposite and then come back with, yeah, but you were right, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, which way are you going to go? Um, this this one, I'm going to go with Changes. Amazing song. Um, that might actually be my favorite song off that album as well. Um, not my favorite Yes song overall, but but on the album, I think that might be, I mean, it's, it, it's a really, really awesome song. 
and it definitely wins this one for me. I, I think it's the better song. So, yeah, I, changes, I'm, baby. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to agree. I'm going to go with changes. This was a clean sweep for me as well. Changes is a fantastic song. I'm not a yes hater. I love yes. Yes is one of my favorite top ten bands. Oh yeah. Hey, Dude, I, I, you know, uh, Asia isn't one of my top 10 bands because Yes has a better catalog. <laughs> so, yeah, awful. Yes yeah. is not even on my top 30, or Asia is not even my top 35. Yeah, I know. It's it's this album. You know and, you know how I got into that album? Because I was on an airplane to go into Oakland to see my grandma, and wow. this guy had the cassette tape, and I go, that's a badass cover. And, I, and he let me listen to it. I go, oh, this is fucking awesome. Oh wow, that's wow, that's a cool story. Yeah, yeah. The cover, the cover is yeah. awesome. Man. The cover made me want to listen to it. He said, yeah. "Hey, have you heard Asia?" And I go, "No." And he puts it in my. I go, "Oh my god, this is amazing." I love that album. I listen to that album. I never go a month without listening to that album. Oh really? Same thing wow. with yes. Yeah, but I really do prefer early. Well, not early, but but seventies yes is what's in my heart big time. It's eighties yes for me. And the next track, um, Asia with Time Again against Cinema. Well, that's an instrumental, which actually right. goes into uh, what song, Jerry? It goes into Leave It. Leave It. Okay, that's kind of like a throwaway song. It's kind of an intro to Leave It. Right. I'm going with Time Again. Time Again is a great time, time again. Do 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 I love that fucking yeah. song. Time again rules. I like cinema, but I think that's a throwaway track. That's actually an intro to fucking leave it. Yeah, but they both fall on that track number. That's why I had to put. Yeah, it I, 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 I. That's why I had to pick. I had to be honest to pick time again. Oh, uh, Mark, time again or cinema? I just said time again. <laughs> I mean, Jerry. Shame on you, Mark. <laughs> Fuck you. Cinema is a great instrumental, dude. But, but it goes in to leave it. Come on. I don't care. Still a great. This isn't a clean sweep for me. I want you to know that. But cinema by a long shot. What a great inst- little short instrumental that is. I love it. And so yeah, I go on with cinema. Wow, just so far, Jerry, you're it, it it's is not gonna be a clean sweep, trust me. It's yeah. not. So. <laughs> well, that was my not clean sweep right there. Oh, what's your choice? Time again or cinema? I'm going with time again. Yeah, again, like you know, cinema's the is the little. It's, it's the, like you, like Mark said, it's the intro into leave it. So, I mean, if 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 um if Asia was only the eight songs, then we could have combined, you know, cinema yeah. into leave it. You know, but since it's like you know equal tracks in each album, uh, cinema's great, dude. I mean, it's awesome and instrumental opening you know intro but you know i I gotta go with asia on this one so um but that intro is two and a half minutes long it's not like a little insert yes i mean it's a a big piece of music it's great i love it but it should have been one song and it was gonna be the name of the band (laughs) it was gonna be the name of the band Yeah. yeah and maybe that's why they put it on there just to show you know, a piece of that, that that's what this was going to become. And it became something bit grander than cinema. But I also went with Time Again on that one. That's a fantastic song. I really do like that one. Um, the next <coughs> couple of tracks, um, let's go. Um, yes, Leave It Against Asia's Wildest Dreams. I, I am going to tell you right now, I love Wildest Dreams. But that acapella of Leave It, I can feel no sense of measure, no illusion as we take refuge in young man's pleasure, breaking down the dreams we made real. And then Trevor Raven comes, one down, one to go, another town, one more show, town, town, give it away. Get down with your bad self, Mark. It's a Fucking badass fucking song. And when the drums come in on that fucking song, my God, that's a fucking amazing song. I love Leave It. I think I'm going to break my... Jerry, you went out. (laughs) Oh. You went out real quick. What now? Am I in? Yeah, you're in now. 
Yeah. I always kick the freaking court. Now I'm going to bring my karaoke machine to Rocket Pod so we can hear Mark sing, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get um, Jerry, what's going to be your pick? I think I already know. Wildest Dreams or Leave It? Uh, like Mark said, Wildest Dreams is a great song, but Leave It, just an incredible tune, man. Yeah. It was such a confusing song at the time, but man, it was awesome. So, And the video was actually kind of like a technological breakthrough back then, too, the way they were like flat and moving around and shit. The oh, harmonies dude. on that song, dude. The harmonies yeah. on that. Oh God, song. no! My but God, yeah, it's, it's acapella harmonies yeah, it's, and the freaking dude, 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 dude. When the guitar comes in, it's like it just goes hard. And did you? And see, they can do it I live. I used to have that fucking live video. They can do you it know? live. Yes. So yeah, leave it, leave it, definitely yeah. for me. Um, Al, wildest dreams or leave it. Uh, go both great songs once again. Wildest Stream is a great song, mm-hmm. you know. Has like um, uh, like a lyrically, it's like a military theme. I think to it, you know. Um, uh, but uh, leave it's amazing, dude. I, I got to go leave it. Um, yeah, I love the harmonies on that song. It's just yeah. a very well written song, and the vocals are like off the charts on that. So. Um, so I'll leave it for me, you know, I'm going to go with yes on this one. Yeah, um, I'm going to agree. I'm going to take leave it on this one too. I thought leave it was a fantastic song. While this dreams, um, on side two, um, there's this little middle section that, that, that just didn't ever resonate with me on the, um, Asia album. So we're going to see a couple of picks here going the other way. Um, the next track is going to be without you. By Asia against our song by Yes. Mark. Ours, I'm going to, what was, Without You, right? By Asia? Yeah, it's Without okay, You. And then, and then freaking uh, our song. Our song, our song kind of starts out a little weak, but then it picks up. I'm going to go with our song. Okay. Jerry. Our song or without you? Yeah, I said it wasn't going to be a clean sweep, and it's not. I'm up to go without you on this one. Um, oh, wow. That was one song on the album uh, I didn't like on 90125. I mean, it's okay, but I could have done without it. And without you, it's not like a, an incredibly great song on the album, but it's better than. But uh, you like it better? Yeah. So I have to go with that one. Al, which way are you going? I'm also going to go with, without you. So on the Asia side there, um, I like it better than our song. Our song, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's a weak song, but it's not my favorite on the album. So right. I agree know. with you. I just I just like It's a good song, song, dude. It's I'm, a good song, yeah. I mean, the whole, the whole Yes album is just no bad tracks on it. I mean, both albums have are, are solid front to back. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, Fantastic. um but you know, I I lean more to the Asia one on this one because I think it's a better song. So, um, here's one where Alan and I don't see eye to eye, and oh, I wow. you know I do with Mark. I'm gonna go with our song. Wow. Um, okay. You know, on this one. Yes. Um, I marked it as being a better song as well. It oh. grabbed my attention better. Than, the keyboards um, on that song is amazing. Yeah. Um, the next song, um, cutting it fine. By Asia against City of Love by Yes. Okay, I love cutting it fine, but fucking Chris Squire now. Boom, boom. Yeah. Hey, what's been choice shy? No, it, just that's like a fucking metal song. Like fucking Yes, that song is so fucking hard. It fucking kills Asia. I love fucking City of Love, City of Love, City of Love. I like that fucking song because Tress Trevor Raven is in there with John. I love it when they both sing together. I love fucking City of Love. All right. What about you, Jerry? City, City of Love, Love is a great freaking song, dude. But Cutting It Fine is my favorite song off that Asia album, so I got to go with that one. So Fuck. Go with Cutting It Fine. Fuck. I'm disappointed <laughs> in you, Jerry. <laughs> I mean, it's. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I'm no, no, that no, bass no. line that Chris Squire does. Boom, 
Born. No, I'm not saying it's bad. The Cutting It Fine is my favorite song off that album. So, Well, mine is Soul Survivor, but I didn't pick that one, did I? <laughs> okay. I'm Jerry. Are you finished? Or yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Al, uh, which way are you going? With Cutting It Fine or City of Love? I'm going to go Cutting It Fine. Um, awesome song. Uh, City of Love is good, too, but Cutting it fine, man. That's a fucking really, really, really good song, dude. It is you know, a really great. good song. I don't, I don't dispute that, you know. Yeah, um, but uh, I think Mark's gonna be 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 the lone wolf on this one, because yeah. uh, I'm gonna go with cutting it fine as well. It was um, just a fantastic track by by um, by the band, and it yeah. kind of showed off a little bit of the prog tendency as well on that song, which is something that they really didn't do that much on this album. Steve so, Howe um, has a great lead on that song. I uh, that's why that. I like it so, yeah. so much. So and Carl Palmer's, Carl Palmer's drumming too, man. You know. Oh yeah, I don't like Emerson Lake and Palmer that much. I like actually Lim Emerson Lake and Powell better. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I we did a review on Freeform. I didn't like that. Eel. Which one yeah. did y'all do? I don't remember. I think it was like brain salad surgery. I didn't like it. Tarkus is good. That's my favorite. Oh, Check out Tarkus. Tarkus. I don't know. One of those two albums I didn't like. Tarkus is, is there what second or third album? Second Tarkus. I was bored. Tarkus. I think is a second. Second, right? I think trilog uh, trilogies are third, right? And then, um, Brain Salads are fourth, and then Works. I think is after that one. So or yeah, Welcome Back Christmas song on Works. I like that song. Dude, that's, no, that's one of my favorite Christmas songs. That Greg yeah. Lake song, I believe yeah, Father awesome Christmas. Christmas. That's one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time. My Christmas, my favorite Christmas song of all time is fucking Father Christmas by the Kings. That's awesome too. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we got to do a we got to do a uh, top eleven Christmas songs when it gets closer to the holidays. We yeah. do, you know, Jerry. Remember that we, we do did that. One, on right? We did one the first year we were on, I think. But I'll do it again. Yeah, but, yeah, we did, but we we also needed we needed to do our top eleven uh, albums of the years of twenty twenty two. I still remember my number one was it was Bowie and freaking uh, uh, Little Bing Drummer Crosby. Boy, uh, Bing Crosby, Bing Crosby, Bing Crosby, right? Bing Crosby, yeah, yeah Bing Crosby. Crosby. one of my all time Crosby. favorite. Freaking oh yeah, we already did our Christmas songs. We yeah. could do it on your show, Andy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine because uh, I would because uh, I was looking for another idea. For yeah. December, so we'll do that the third week of December. Because we're gonna we're gonna do like what December thirtieth, I think, our top uh, albums of the year on Mark and Jerry and Chuck. No, okay. I, I don't know why. You know why I call him Chuck? Because Ralph Fierro calls him Chuck. Charles. <laughs> oh. There you go. So uh, we're down to the last track, guys. Um, it's going to be "Here Comes the Feeling Against Hearts" by Yes. So go for it, Mark. Which way would you prefer? Here comes the feeling by Asia or Hearts by Yes? I love Here Comes the Feeling, but I'm going to say Hearts because that song has so many time signatures on it. Yeah. It's just amazing. And it's like it starts off slow. And it just, it just like goes like fucking ear candy on me. I love fucking hearts. What uh, what are you thinking, Jerry? Yeah, I'm um, back on the yes it. column on that one. Hearts is a great song, man. I love it, man. I love the changes in it. Mm -hmm. John Anderson's voice is freaking amazing in that song. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a no-brainer for me with that one. Right. Al, which way are you going to go uh, on this one? Here comes the feeling or hearts? I'm asking you to choose hearts on this one too. I love the musical interplay yeah. of that song. Mm -hmm. um, it might be, uh, might be one of the most progressive songs on an album. Like, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they, they they end the album really strong. I think a little stronger than Asia, you know, ending. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll go with yes on this one, man. Yeah, um, I'm going to go with yes on this one too. Hearts was a clean sweep. Now. Um, nine oh one two five was not a very prog album at all. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of prog songs well, on that album, I, dude. I a lot of prog is, songs on that if album. You really, 
if you really like listen to the musical interplay, there's there's a lot of shit going on. Hearts there. changes. It's city not, of love. Uh, it's not. It's 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 not close to the edge or anything like that. Right. But I'm just you know, it, listen, man. You know all these it's rock pop. All these prog bands, like you know, they changed into the eighties. They they Genesis, Rush, yeah. you know, they you know, I mean, they, they they adapted and they survived. You know, Emerson, Lake and Palmer was done. I mean, they they broke up at the end of the seventies. So yeah, you know, but um, yeah, man, they were just changing with the times. They were going, but there's still, you know, there's still prog tendencies in there, prog prog and shit. You know, so. I mean, I, like I said, man. I mean, if you really listen to musical interplay, Trevor, man, he's a fucking awesome guitar player. Oh, fuck and he, yeah. And uh, and Chris is still fucking Chris Squire, dude. I oh, mean, man. He's, amazing he's, bass you know, player. So. Amazing. But and I, that, mean, yeah. I used to have the VHS of them where you know yeah. it's square. I I blew that shit out. My ex, my first wife, made me throw it away. I was so pissed. <laughs> I think I think all these I think all these these bands they just. You know, they, they streamlined their sound. They, they concentrated a bit more on songs, uh, you know, going into the 80s. So that's why, you know, uh, you know, it could be popish and spotty. And still, man, I mean, like, the pop band was doing, like, musicianship like these like guys, this. you know yeah. what I mean? So it's still, it's still prog pop, you know, pop. You know, mainstream prog. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. one yeah. album I'm gonna say that, that is the best with the Trevor Raven is Talk. Yeah, that's a great album, dude. Great. Fuck yeah, album. that album rules. Yeah, I got that on final. I, I tough, love that album. I think, I think it's tough to find that album now. I bought it on Amazon for twenty five bucks. Oh, yeah, I know. I went to look for it. It was like one hundred and nineteen dollars. Yeah, like, oh, Jerry, twenty five bucks. You know when I gave that to you two years ago, I said buy it. You didn't. You fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh well. <laughs> I so bought it. So let's do our tally. Um, it really looks like yes, nine hundred one two five one. The whole thing. Um. Once again, Mark and Jerry seem to have picked that album almost exclusively. Except for a couple of tracks here and there, and Al and I were a little bit of back and forth on both both albums, so most of it did go to yes. But nothing wrong with this one, though. I go with the album cover in Asia, album. though. <laughs> so um, I do a tally where I rate each song between one and five, and then I added everything up. And for me, it was yes thirty four. And ages of 33 after I tallied all those numbers. And also, I had a poll also on the Black Spinner Circle, and Asia won that poll. Ooh. Yeah. Asia won that poll four, four to zero, actually. Actually, I looked up the sales of that. Actually, Asia sold 10 million. I think Yes only sold 8 million. That kind of shocked me a little bit. It did shock me, too. Yeah. Well, Asia was more pop than Yes on that album, if you think about it. Yeah, and um, Asia had a lot more of the uh, what's the more of the commercial. It had a bigger push. It did than the nine hundred one. It had a bitching ass album cover too. Album that does help a lot. All right, guys. Hey, well, thanks a lot for joining me tonight. Um, this panel, thank you so much. It seems to be a recurring event twice a week, and I love it a lot. Tomorrow, we are going to be on the BS sessions with Mark and Jerry. We are going to be putting together our very own personalized Def Leppard album. And um, next week is um, Thanksgiving week. I'm not going to be doing a Black Spinner Circle show, but we will be on the BS sessions with Mark and Jerry. On Black Friday, we're doing our top 11. Black Wonder album. Black. Black songs. Yeah, mm. songs with the word black in the title. Yeah. And that'll be on Friday. It, it even has, it doesn't have to have black in the title. It could have black in the lyrics. So, yeah. Oh. Could. Okay. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you guys that you could put black in the lyrics or black in the title. It doesn't matter. Right. Anything with black in it. And speaking of black, um, the last show on here on November. Well, the last show for November, I believe it's November 30th. It's going to be called Black and Blue. 
And what it's going to be, I'm, we are going to combine the Black Sabbath with Blue Oyster Cult for that episode. Yeah, I'm down with that, man. Um, it was an idea given to me by um, William Toth. So William Toth is going to be on there. And so is, excuse me, and so is Brad Dahl is going to be on that show as well. And y'all, cool people, are, y'all are welcome to come. What um, it's going to be, we're going to pick our five top albums from each band and talk about the bands, our personal opinions about them, and just a little rap about them, you know, of how much we love Black Sabbath and Blue Oyster Cult. We have not had a Blue Oyster Cult show, and we haven't talked about Black Sabbath for a month or two. I so like Blue I like Blue Oyster Cult, but I'm not that, like... Reversed in it. Reversed in it, it, so I can't be on that one. That would okay. be fucked up. Okay. Well, um, the, the um, invitation was out there. If you want to join us, yeah. but you can watch us and comment. I can't. I always comment, but you don't see them. Yeah, I didn't see the comment you said about Kyler Murray's hamstring yesterday. Kyler Murray had a hamstring, and they're going to see if he's going to play this week if he's good against the Niners. So, and that's a Monday night, so um, he might have a couple of extra days rest since it's yeah. a Monday night. But um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, actually, I. We skipped my uh, album because I had some personal issues, but I changed my album, actually. I'm changing yeah. it to Pink Floyd's Division Bell. I'm changing oh, it to that one. I'll be on that one. Yeah. So <laughs> well, because, you know, I, That was the one I was originally going to pick. And I know it's, you know, it's not like a, you know, a lesser known album, but I think it, it needs to be reminded of how good it is. So Yeah, so, I, I, I went to that tour at the Rose Bowl, yeah. and I socked my friend because he brought me shake weed. I couldn't get high. That was fucked up. Um, so that so starting <laughs> in December, we're going to have two guest picks. Um, the first one we're going to start with Mark, he's going to be doing kicks. Which kicks album? Blow My Fuse 30th oh, okay. anniversary Skip. version. I'm there. I'm there. Not the original, the remixed version. Oh, shit. come on. The, well, the, the remix only... is far superior than the original version. There's not like a thousand extra Apple. songs we're going to do on it, is it? No, I'm just doing the original, the original tracks. songs, yeah. the original yeah. remix tracks. All right, I'm down and, for that. And then the week after that, we're going to be doing um, Jerry's pick, which is going to be Pink Floyd's The Division Bell. And then the week after that, we'll get into the Christmas songs. And then and then the BS sessions, we'll do the whatever we're doing in that month, but also the top albums of 2022. Hey, Kate, where are you? Yeah, um, Kate might join us with a black and blue. Okay. Um, I spoke to her. That's earlier sucks. this week. I like talking to her. She's bitching. Yeah. And um, she's been pretty busy with, with school and all. Yeah. So um Al, um, are these any of the shows you want to join us with as well? I'd love to join on the black and blue one. Uh I mean, yeah, a bunch of them, man. You know, I'll let you know like what I can make. Yeah. I wish I could make yeah. the Def Leppard one tomorrow, man, but I'm going to Wasp, so I can't I make that one. We do. Uh, you guys gonna have you guys gonna have Ralph on too, right? Oh yeah. That's Who cool. is all coming on tomorrow? Ralph, Char- well, Charles is part of the group. It's just Ralph, Charles, and Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll have to watch the replay of it. Good. So uh, I will keep you up to date with everything, Al. All right. So um, um, just to see if you're free, and yeah. so that you can join us. So we're going to finish 2022 very strong on. On the Black Spinner podcast and on the BS sessions, yeah. things are going very well, and it's a lot of fun. Hey, so, hey Jerry, you need to change your name to BS Sessions because you don't do shit on that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> one year I might. One year I might. I'm just saying, just promote the one thing you do. <laughs> just he saying, quite a bit. All right, I love guys. you, bro. Hey, um, everybody, thanks. Thanks a lot for watching, and after you watch this, why don't you also put a comment down there which album you prefer, either the Yes, 90125, or the debut album by Asia. And and once again, thanks a lot, guys. Y'all, y'all are always great on here, and y'all always put a lot of effort into these things. So I will see you two tomorrow, and Al, have a good time at, 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 um, at Wasp tomorrow. Thank yeah, you. Really. Wasp is great, dude. I'm just so sorry you're not seeing John, dude. 
Yeah, John that was, was amazing. I was really looking forward for Armored Saint because I've never seen them before. No, no comeback, dude. John, they're yeah, always touring. I know, I know. We, you know, I mean, for the first time, you know, I was and I was really looking forward to it. But I, hey, yeah, that's the first time I seen Armored Saint, and he kid, he saw my vi- well. Now you could go look at my videos. <laughs> but the thing is, jo- John rules, dude. John yeah. rules. Yeah. I like Jason McMaster. I like Dangerous Toys. I like Broken Teeth. But there's nothing like John. But uh, you know what? Armored Saint will be keep, keep turning. So you'll be seeing them. And we were talking about, it was since we were, since like the show had, yes, uh, Asia yeah. on it and Carl Palmer. I'm actually going to go see that Carl Palmer ELP thing next Tuesday. And if he's doing a show here in New Jersey, there's a friend of mine that, um, and I didn't even know this, but, uh, Dave DiPietro that was in the uh, um, TT Quick and Scott Metaxas that was in Profit are actually going to be the musicians in his band playing with him doing this ELP stuff. And I didn't know that until a friend of mine told me. And my a, a fr- the friend is actually knows those guys, so he's trying to get me like these like VIP thing with them. So. If I'm at, if I'm at Carl Palmer, dude, that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, you know? that would be awesome. He's a killer drummer, man. Yeah. Um. So I got. I'm definitely going to the show next Tuesday. They're playing here in New Jersey, and then the following night, the uh, Thanksgiving Eve, I'm going to see Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. Fuck. So, and then the Saturday after Thanksgiving, I'm going to see Zebra here in New Jersey as well. Oh, so, oh, Zebra. Zebra? Fuck. Yeah. Zebra rules, dude. Uh, I like Zebra. <laughs> So I'm I'm a I'm a constant whore, bro. <laughs> I know you. So am I, but my wife kind of like fucking gets the balls off. Yeah, it's like I want to go. I want to go see Ari. I want to go see Aria Speedwagon again at Yamaha Casino, because fucking who's the guitar player of that band right now? Who? Aria Speedwagon. Who's freaking um, Amato? Dave. Uh, Dave, Dave Amato. Amato. Yeah. Dude, when I saw them in. Fucking, he had COVID, so they went acoustic. It was cool, but it sucked. But, but dude, you saw the only hurt. time they've ever done that, though. Yeah, but that sucked <laughs> because I wanted to see Dave fucking, fucking rip. And why did fucking a drummer have to bring out a fucking like boxes and shit and do this shit? <laughs> why couldn't he bring a full drum kit in like Tesla? What the fuck is wrong with that shit? Now, speaking of switching to acoustic, um, the, the first time I saw Jack White um, was here in um, Houston during a festival, and um, he started his set, but he was having, but, but they were having electrical issues. So instead of stopping everything, the dude brought everything acoustic out <laughs> while they worked on it. So he did like a mini acoustic set while they worked out the kinks and the electrical, and then cool. he, he came back out that's with his big band, the only so that was band really cool I would how they have that kind of talent to just, you know, yeah. Go I by. love, I love Aris Vega, but the only band I want to see acoustic is Tesla. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> I just, no, I've seen Aris Vega needs to fucking put those leads in and don't let them go and fucking all that shit. I didn't want to see fucking Brian hit fucking bongo. <laughs> oh, fuck that shit. It was cool. But fucking dude, I wanted to see Dave and Model rip because I saw them on that fucking uh, Earth, the band, a small man and his chicken. Yeah. Sure, and Dave, and when I first saw it, I go, he's playing those leads too fast, like Gary Risha. But then I got used to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, I love Gary Risha, but well, he's been the only, he's been the only one they've had since Gary, right? Yeah, he rules, and it's yeah. like, fuck. I didn't want to see Aria acoustic. I want to see them plugged in. I'm I don't like acoustic shows. Dude, they I'm tore sorry. I like electric. You'll get your chance, man. Get, they're I'm, playing at Yamava Casino. I'm probably going to get them in January. Yeah. Interesting. They better not get COVID again. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, great show. I will talk to you all tomorrow, Al. I'll talk to you during the week. And- yeah. And we'll get things going. Thanks a lot, everybody, for you guys. For watching. You guys have a great show tomorrow, man. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks, man. Y'all, care. Y'all take care, Enjoy guys. your show, and I hope Jason kicks ass for you, man. Um, yeah, it's gonna be cool, dude. He's a great. Singer. I like Jason. He's got a. Gr- He's got a great voice.
Hey, Al, have you seen Wasp or has it been saw, a while? Of course. I saw Wasp uh, like 10 years ago, last time they, they toured in the States. Okay. And it, Black, they were great when I saw them last. So. Blackie was singing live. I think the background vocals were taped, but he sounded good. That that freaking thing he has with the freaking big mic stand, he yeah. blocks them out, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, the Elvis, what he calls it, Elvis? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. He, they they were amazing. I liked them. All right, All cool. right, guys. All right, guys. Y'all have a good night. Take care. Peace. Peace. Have a good night. Love you guys.